Good morning, grade tens. I will be your mathematical literacy teacher this year. You will need the following things for this subject. Two three choir notebooks, one quotation file, a Casio scientific calculator, one ream of paper, paint, blue or black, pencils, erasers and a ruler. The ruler is very important for when we do map work and measurement so you will need the ruler and a cal the calculator is important for all the calculations that we're going to do if you ever have another brand of calculator it's fine don't buy another one just bring your scientific calculator that you have okay i've printed this out for you what i expect from you this term please bring your textbook notebook and calculator every day Take notes during the lessons, do the activities and exercises that I give you, pay attention to the video lessons, you can bring a flash drive if you want to, then I can give you the lesson that you do that day. I will also post all the lessons on YouTube, so I will also give that link to you. It should be on the page that the EAS handed out. And please ask questions. If you struggle with anything, or any part of the topic that we're working on you can whatsapp me on the number below however i will only respond during school hours so that's from eight o'clock till three o'clock thereafter i will only come back to you the next day you will also see on the note that i hand out i show you how to take notes in your writing book please write it like that the topic the date the page number those are the three important things. And then for each extra thing that we're doing, like the subheadings, you have to write the subheadings as well. So for our first topic, we're going to look at number formats. This is in your textbook on page 12 to 15. And then again on 74 to 79. But today we're only going to look at page 12 to 15. This week, you need to do these activities. So for today, you will go home and you'll read page 12 to 15. You're going to do exercise one, number one to 4.4. And that's all you do for today. If you don't finish this in class, you can do it as homework. And then on Wednesday, we will check that you have done your work. If you want, you can work ahead. So Wednesday, we're going to look at page 74 to 75, and we're going to do page 75, exercise one, number one and two in class. And then on Friday, we're going to look at page 76 to 79, and then you're going to do exercise two and exercise three, but only number one. Okay, you can write this down. If you want the EA to pause, he can pause for you. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. Okay, our first, our first topic, decimal point and comma. What is a decimal point? So this is a point that is used to separate whole numbers from part of fractional numbers. For example, in the number 36.9, the point separates the 36, which is the whole number, and the 9, which is the fractional part, which is actually just 9 tenths. So 36.9 is equal to 36 and 9 tenths. You'll see I have a picture here. So this is our tenths. This is our ones. This will be our decimal point. This is a tenth, a hundredth, and a thousandth. So if we move this way, it becomes bigger. If we move to the right, it becomes smaller. Please take note of this. Okay, next one. Thousand separators. That's our next heading. 
In South Africa, we use a space to separate thousands, not a comma or a point. If you put a comma or a point in a thousand separate this place, your answer will be wrong. For example, if you write 2500 with a comma as your separator, I'm going to read it as 2.5, not as 2500. So you need to use a space, not a point, not a comma. So here you can see our first one is 1300 and the space is between the one and the three. The next one is 45,650 and you can see the separator or the space is between the 5,000 and the 600th place. The next one, 167,000 214 and again the space is between the thousand and the hundredth place. The last one is 3,500,000. Between the 3 million and the 500 there's a separator and then again between the thousand and the hundred there's also a space. So that's our thousand separators. Please do not use a point or a comma. I am going to mark it wrong. Okay, now let's look at reading and writing numbers. This is a place value chart. You should have seen this in grade 8 and grade 9. So we start at the right hand side, once, and then it gets bigger. It multiplies by 10 each time. So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands and millions. We read from the left hand side, so we read from this side. My first number is 7,435. My next number is 36,209. The last number is 8,520,186. So you need to be able to read numbers like that. I don't want you to say 74,100,35. No, you are not stupid like that. You can read numbers. So remember this place value chart. If it's going to make it easier for you to read and write numbers, you can take this down. So millions, hundred thousands, ten thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. If we look where the place where the um, thousand separates would be, it would be between the million and the hundred thousand. So it's between these two. Then again between thousand and hundreds. It's there. So there will be a space, there will be a space, and there will be a space, and there will be a space. Now, even though you can read numbers, you also need to know how to write numbers. I'm going to use the same numbers that we have here and show you how it's written out in words. The first one, 7,435. Okay, the next number, 36,209, 8,520,186. I see I made a mistake here, there is supposed to be 86. Okay, let's look at the next one. If you want to pause here, please do. The activity I'm going to give you at the end, you're going to need to read and write the, le the numbers in the exercise. Okay, let's look at the next one. How do we interpret millions and billions? So sometimes if you read something like a house is worth 2 million rand, what does that actually mean? 2 million means it's 2 
times 1 million. And a million is one digit with six zeros. That's a million. So even though it looks like a two, if you write it out as a number format, it's going to look like that. And you need to be able to do this. 1.5 million would be 1.5 times one six zeros, and that is one million five hundred thousand. The next one, 40 million, same process, 40 times one and six zeros is 40 million. Billions are one and nine zeros. So if I have five billion, it is written out number format, five with nine zeros. If I have 4.75 billion, then it's 4.75 times one and nine zeros, which gives me 4 billion, 750 million. And the last one, if I have 250 billion, then it's 250 times one and nine zeros, which gives me 250 billion. Our last subtopic for today is positive and negative numbers. Positive numbers are numbers greater than zero. You can indicate a positive number with a plus. However, we always assume a number without a symbol in front is a positive number. A negative number must indicate, be indicated with a minus. So negative numbers are numbers less than zero. And you should always remember positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. For example, if you have 400 rand, that would be greater than minus 700 rand or negative 700 rand. In a scenario like this, the 400 would be what you have and the negative 700 would be what you owe. So it's a loss, the negative 700 loss. Negative five degrees Celsius would be colder than 20 degrees Celsius. It is less than 20 degrees Celsius. And 8,500 is greater than negative 12,000. So even though the number sounds bigger, because it has a negative in front of it, it is actually smaller. Okay, you can do this activity. It is on page 15. If you want to go through page 12 to 15 to just recap what we just did, it's exercise one, number one to 4.4. .4.